What's up, everyone? I'm Carlos. This is Steven. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Today, we are doing a house called Wilhelm Parfumery. It was founded in 2015, and I'm really psyched to tell you all about it. Keep it right there. Brooklyn Fragrance Lover Wilhelm Parfumery. It was founded by Jan Algren in 2015. Okay. They have 21 fragrances out there in the world, and they were all done by Jerome Epinay. He's one of my favorite perfumers of late. He's done a lot of Atelier Cologne. Mm -hmm. Also by Rado. By Rado. Before we go on with this video, just want to say that these were sent to us from the company, but all opinions, as always, are our own. So what do you know about this company? Well, I know that the creative director named the brand after his grandfather, and I know that one of the fragrances, Morning Chess, is inspired by trips that they would take to Sweden. So he's of Swedish descent, and um, they have 21 fragrances in their uh, database. They're New York-based. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, they can be found at Ada's de Venustas. I've been definitely interested in the line. I smelled a few here and there, and I just had to get a couple, and here we are. We have some to review for you. Each fragrance in the line has a backstory, if you will. Mm -hmm. We'll try to do our best to adhere to what the story is. So let's do this. Let's go. Let's start this off with Purple Fig. It's right in front of me. It was inspired by... Oh gosh, the uh, Cité du Fillet. Yes, City of Fig. The City of Fig, that's right. So it has a fig tree and the living green walls of Paris and... Cool um, inspiration. Absolutely. I own this one as well. Do you? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's a good fragrance. The notes mm. for Purple Fig are lemon, cassis, angelica, cyclamen, galbanum, fig, cedar, and cypress. Wow. That's a pretty dense note breakdown. Um, so I definitely smell the fig. So it's named appropriately. Um, so cassis is an interesting note. It comes from the leaves and the buds of the black currant plant. It works really well here, you know? Um, Usually cassis or black currant, if you smell it in its raw form, it has like a really strong musky smell. Okay. I don't really get that from this. It just smells very ripe and juicy and tart and... Can I get a word in here? Go All ahead. of the above. Your turn. <laughs> All of the above. It's very lush. It's very... Yeah. The fig is present. You get the green nuances. It's very fresh. Green too. Yep. Tart. Wow. Is a That's word nice. I would describe it as well. Yeah. I just think it's a really well done rendition of the note of fig. Um, there are a lot of fragrances out there that utilize fig, and some are more realistic than others, and I think this one hits the nail right on the head. I do love this one. I'm not a big, huge fig fan overall. I've owned one or two here and there, but yeah, this is a standout for me. Yeah. Job well Very done. Very well done. Up next, we have Dear Polly. The inspiration for this was a love letter in sent to his wife, Polly, That's from really Jan. That's sweet. Yeah. So waking up in the morning and she would normally make her black tea. Mm -hmm. So it does contain a note of black tea and it has black amber in there. Magnetic cap, by the way. Mm -hmm. The notes are bergamot, apple, black tea, oak moss, black amber, and musk. I've recently found out that I love the note of tea. Yeah. <laughs> I love this Dear Polly a lot. I love that it has that note of apple in there mm -hmm. and it just gives it character. So as opposed to just being this smooth, tranquil, calming scent on account of the note of tea, mm -hmm. you also have these other notes in there that kind of keep it interesting and enigmatic. Um, really nice, but it's definitely not on the fruity side like the first one is. No. This one is definitely all about that note of tea, but it does get musky too. It's got a slight smokiness going on in there right. from the black tea. I wore this last week to work. The girls loved it and it lasted a good portion of my work day. Wow. I didn't respray until on the way home. Wow. I typically do an after lunch respray. So that's, I do too. That's my MO, but not that day when I wore this. So two solid yeah, fragrances there. Lot. And the last one is called Poets of Berlin. And this one is based off of the trilogy by David Bowie. So yes. here you go. What are the notes for this guy here? So the notes are blueberry, lemon, bamboo, green wild orris, vanilla bean, sandalwood, and vinegar. 
but the two strongest notes, if you look online, are vanilla and blueberry. This is so good. Yeah. <laughs> this was love at first sniff. For yeah. me, when I sniffed it at Edis de Venustas, Thank you. Just loved it. This is great. It's full. It's sweet. You have to be in the mood for a sweet fragrance, but it's not chemically or, or synthetic sweet bomb in any way. It's really natural. You get that. I get an accord of blueberry and lemon. Yes. It's just yes. to die for. So I love it. <laughs> I really, really do like that one. So the funny story with this one is Carlos had me try it a few months ago. You had me smell the sample and I was like, oh my God, this is really good. What is this? <laughs> and you're like, you didn't want to tell me as I was smelling it. And then you were like, oh, it's, you know, it's by Wilhelm and uh, we got to talking about it. And I really enjoyed this one ever since then. And it has this gorgeous vanilla note. Like you said, it's not overly sweet. It's not synthetic. It has a natural appeal about it. And what I like the most about it is that it's not cloying, but it's done in such a sophisticated way that even though Agreed. it is in gourmand territory, it has all of these other elements really grounding it. Yeah, I find that the whole aesthetic of the line is that they're all full fragrances. You get your money's worth. They're 245 for a 100 ml bottle, which these are doesn't look like it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it because it has this compressed look to it, but it's a really cool presentation. It has the ridges on the outline and uh, it's actually inspired by a classic aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And the entire brand, like we said earlier, is inspired by the creative director's grandfather. So he was very sort of debonair, charismatic gentleman. They offer 10 mil travel sprays that look just like this with the ridges. Mm -hmm. I'll show you a picture of the packaging and the travel sprays as well. Great line, right? I love it. I love it so far. And it's quite often that we'll do an overview on a particular house or a particular line, but there's always like a favorite and there's always one that we don't care about so mm -hmm. much. In this case, it seems like everything that I've tried, I've really enjoyed, you know, and it really takes me to a different place or a different time. And that's kind of what these are inspired by. Different moments, different trips, different memories, so. It's a great US-based niche line, for yeah. sure. I want to smell more. <laughs> I want to smell all 21. We do have some samples. <laughs> we do. But uh, only six for today. But um, what is the next one called? This one is called Morning Chess, mm. which was inspired by... Yeah, this is the one that was inspired by, I believe it's called Falkenberg, and it's in Sweden. Okay. And they would go there uh, for summer vacation, and um, the creative director, I believe with his brother and his grandfather, would just wake up early in the morning and would play chess and for hours. Know, test their wits. And um, I love this one. Are you a chess player? I used to be. I, yeah, I, I think you would it. be, I can see that. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I haven't played in a long time though. But this one, uh, you wanna go through the notes? Sure. Okay. Uh, 2015 release, bergamot, leather, galbanum, patchouli, and black amber. So the galbanum gives this nice green, open vibe about it. And what, are you getting it too? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Isn't it great? It has, it has a hint of the king. Uh-huh, yeah. But I think the, the darker aspects of- The darker, of greener aspects yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm gonna put that, that on screen really later. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you should. So um, that's called Morning Chess? That's when I would get a bottle of Morning Chess. All right. Yeah. Black Citrus is another one that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. A lot of citrus fragrances are kind of fleeing and airy. This is called Black Citrus and it's got a real depth to it. Okay. Black Citrus came out in 2015, part of the original collection. The notes are cardamom, calabrian, bergamot, mate, violet, patchouli, and birch. Wow. Black Citrus. That's an interesting one. I think so too. You know, I got to thinking, I saw the name initially and black citrus. So of course there's citrus in there and it comes across quite strong and natural and it's very well done. But then the black designation, like it, does that make it appropriate for the colder months as well? And funny enough, it is. Like this is a citrus that I would wear in the fall and winter. That Probably will... apply a bit heavier, but- But um... it'll withstand the cold. I think so. I mean, it has the cardamom and the birch and all these spicy and smoky elements about it. So it's, it's a really interesting blend. It smells much better on skin because I have smelled it on skin 
then that paper... I believe you. That paper doesn't know justice. It yeah. smells magnificent on skin. It blooms. It's a bright, realistic citrus with the darkness that lies underneath. It mm -hmm. really works. I like it a lot. I look forward to wearing that one on skin. Yeah. So, check it out next time you're at we'll 80s do. of Anustas. We'll do. The last sample that we have, which was sent to us by 80s of Anustas, of course, is Smoke Show. That one sounds like it's going to be good. There you go, Thank sir. Thank you, my friend. Part of the original lineup of 2015, pink pepper, saffron, rose oil, leather, vetiver, cedar, and agarwood. I get all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you said, that's what I smell. I get the oud, I get the saffron. They do also have an oud offering. It's called the oud affair. Mm. Actually, I get a lot of vetiver from this. And that's only because it reminds me of Lorenzo Villaresi's vetiver. That's, really that's a good nice. one. That's a classic. Yeah, yeah, it is. I smell a lot of vetiver. It's very daring, very rich and robust. Vetiver shines through on this yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's like, I mean, so it's called Smoke Show, right? It's like you're, you know, in a bar and you have that ambiance about it and you have jazz music playing in the background, people smoking their cigars. Surprisingly enough, tobacco isn't a note. I was tobacco? tobacco. Uh, I don't. No. I'm getting a smoky vetiver is what I yeah. got from It that. is smoky. It is smoky. And yeah. again, on skin, way better than that test strip. Mm. So I think we need to go visit 80s of Anusis and go through the whole Wilhelm line. Yeah. And there are a lot of other really good ones that I've tried. And uh, we also smelled uh, Don't Tell Jasmine recently. That one is also very nice. Beautiful. It's a, yeah. it's a jasmine bomb if you're a jasmine fan. It's more feminine. It, it's a little too... It's a little too... Feminine for my particular taste, and I'm not the biggest Jasmine fan, but it's well done. I it can, is very I can well definitely done. appreciate very well it. Done. And it wasn't overly indolic, from no. what I remember. Indolic, that means like kind of poopy smelling. <laughs> kind of like a lot of food smell, but that's another video, I suppose. Yeah. Thank you for joining in. Of course, Carlos, anytime. How awesome was this line? I love it. I love it. Like love, you love, said, love. I'm going to have to take a stop at, you know, 80s. Over there. Over there. Yeah. Right off the path train. Hope you enjoyed this presentation of Wilhelm. Steve and I had a lot of fun doing this. For sure. We have quite a few of the line, not the entire line. I believe there are 16 samples from Wilhelm. For one lucky subscriber, all you have to do is subscribe to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, subscribe to Steve and Red Lessons. Thank you. Like and share this video, then leave one comment down below with what you enjoyed most about this presentation of Wilhelm. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. If you've been a subscriber, click on that bell icon so you don't miss notifications of new reviews, new content, giveaways, and all the fragrant fun always happening here at BFL. Don't forget, vote.fragrance.org. We appreciate it. <laughs> See you at the next review. Bye, everyone.